I've lived in this neighborhood since 1998. Oh, yeah. Actually, 1997. And this is the cleanest this yard has looked since I've lived here. And that's a statement. Yeah. No, but seriously, you did a great job. This is unbelievable. I mean, the sidewalk and everything. I mean, these folks, uh, you know, they have an elderly lady and they've been, had a lot of uh, problems. And not problems, but, you know, issues to deal with over the last few years. So it's nice of you to come over and take care of them. Hey, buddy. I got some bad news for you. I think I might have to stop watching your videos, you know, because last night I had a dream that I was going around edging people's yards and dude, I was even edging places where you're not supposed to edge. <laughs> I don't want to be dreaming about it necessarily, you know? What's going on? I'm down here in Mississippi. We're pretty close to the ocean, as you might be able to tell from the sidewalk. And you think that's concrete? No, that's sand. Lots and lots of sand. We'll just pretend I didn't do that. I'll come back later. Look, it's a bear claw. Ah. While the edging is a big portion of this project and it goes whoo -hoo, way down there on this massive corner lot, that is not why I stopped. I actually stopped because I saw this brick and I was driving along and I go, <laughs> you see how dark that is? Ooh, buddy. I'm kind of starting to think it might be kind of a dark brick, but there's definitely a lot of dark, nasty algaes on it. So, I'm gonna do what I can to get that cleaned up. Hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? And then, doing great. Uh, so we're gonna start with the curve line and the edging, and then from there, we'll come in and add all this, and mow the yard. And once we've got all that knocked out, then I can see, well, I guess I better see if they got running water first. Uh, this is not a good sign. I'm seeing rags. That means don't use. I may have talked too soon. Ha! I found one. Does it work? I don't know. I'm going to guess it does. Turn it on here, water comes out there. And it's got really, really good pressure. All right, so the power washing is a go. Now I'm not gonna power wash everything. I would be here for like three or four days. They've got a big driveway, a big house, a lot of brick, big porch, long sidewalk, and a ton of sidewalk that wraps all the way around. It would take me a significant amount of time to do all that. Really, the crazy thing is, on pretty much every project I work on, I could spend a solid week at that property just beautifying the property from top to bottom. So the thing is, I have to prioritize where I have the best impact on that property and what's going to be, you know, like I said, the best impact. What's going to give them the biggest gift. This will be the first time that I busted out the power washer on the tour which is really awesome so that marks a uh i don't know a point in the tour maybe it marks the fact that <laughs> i went to arkansas spent a month there power washing and boy did i burn myself out on some power washing sun up to sundown every day for uh pretty close to a month over the winter and you know i mean that's that's enough to make you not want to power wash for a while but on this one i will that's why I stopped here. Hey, one more thing. If you haven't, if you would, just give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. It goes a long ways to allowing me to continue doing this type of project. Now, this one in particular, I drove, <laughs> drove over 4,000 miles to land in this particular spot. Pretty crazy. Uh, 4,000 miles in like eight states. Land here. What are the odds? Pretty cool. She won the lottery today. We're gonna get this cleaned up. Let's go ahead and get into it. There we go. This is a blower rack. Um, I'm not sponsored by this company. In fact, I don't have any sponsors. I kind of enjoy it that way. Um, <laughs> the thing with, here's the thing with not having sponsors. I don't have to have my hands tied. Either I like the product or I don't. Pretty simple. Uh, as far as this product goes, I don't know. It's all right. It serves its purpose. It locks up the uh, equipment so nobody steals it. 
I do have to set it in there weird and then push this up and then it'll latch but other than that um, yeah I have it mounted kind of high I don't have a choice is what it is um, it's got a lock on it pretty cool right cool there's there's that again not sponsored and uh, neither is the trash in the back of the truck like that's not sponsored either later that's gonna be sponsored by me um, cleaning up the back of my my setup my daughter wants an allowance so I'm gonna have her work with me on cleaning the back of that truck cleaning the back of my cab on my truck probably washing the truck for the first time oh, I'm just delaying the inevitable let's get to work all right let's go ahead and get this out of the way some of you guys are gonna say Kevin you don't seem into it you seem tired you seem wiped out I'm on state eight of going up and down the coast in 100 plus degree heat yeah, crazy lawns. I just got over being sick. Uh, my wife went to the hospital because she's pregnant and she wanted to get a sonogram of the baby to make sure it was safe because she's a mom and she got worried. And I said, okay, go do that. And she came back, she got sick. And then I got sick. And I'm getting over that. Uh, that's been about a week ago now. I'm totally fine. I'm not going to get anybody else sick. But uh, boy, am I still fatigued. You know what I mean? Your muscles are sore, stuff like that. Now I went jet skiing yesterday out on the ocean, and that was a workout on my muscles. So I am definitely fatigued. I am gonna knock this out. See uh, today's motivation. I'm listening to Journey. Won't be long now till you're alone with your lovers. I don't have a career in singing, uh, but then. Uh, we're gonna follow that up with some Red Bull and get this get this show going. That'll do it. Woo! <laughs> so I'm I'm on this property. I go take her the before and after pictures. The before pictures say before and after out of habit. I go take the before pictures. I'm in the backyard and the owner comes out and says, oh no no not back here she's afraid somebody's gonna see it you know with um, when somebody's life is in disarray um, you know it's hard to accept help it's hard I've been there myself and that's the reason why I love doing this and enjoy doing this okay so the, the backyard's kind of tall and out of respect she asked that I don't show that so I'm going to not show that she said she was talking with her sister and her sister said oh I'm so embarrassed that he's there if I come knock on your door I don't want you to feel embarrassment that I'm here okay and I know some of my titles are rough I clean this disgusting I clean this disastrous this extremely overgrown that's the marketing aspect of YouTube and getting the videos out there but really I'm here to help I want to see somebody that had a chaos situation come back into order just a little bit and give them hope. That's going to give them the motivation to get out and do a little bit more on their own. I know what it's like. In fact, I've lived a life myself where it looks like you're a hoarder, where your lawn's overgrown. The type of stuff I run into is not unfamiliar territory to me. It's very familiar. And the thing is, when somebody gets sick, you can have the mentality, like for me, myself, I was very, very orderly. When I moved out of my parents' house, I wanted my house spick and span. It was clean, everything was in its place. Not OCD type thing, but I kept my place looking very, very clean. And um, then along came my wife. My wife was the same way when I, when I got married to her. But we moved into a house in Kansas um, that had a bunch of stuff in it when we moved in. And it was like antique stuff, cool stuff that you don't want to throw away. Because you're like, man, that's really cool. I bet we can sell that. So you can go to try to figure out how to sell it. And this is before, like, Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist was really a thing. Craigslist was a thing, but it wasn't big in the area we were at. So we go to sell some of this stuff. We're not having any luck. We don't know how to go about doing it. We've never done it before. Now, it is cool that I held on to that stuff because when I moved to Tulsa, I did sell it. And that is what helped us pay our rent. So it worked out perfect, but our life fell into chaos and it started from keeping some of these cool things around. Now, where I'm at in my life, I'll throw it away. I don't care. It's got value. It doesn't have value to me. I need it out of here. 
I need I need my space. My space is more valuable to me. I want it. It doesn't have to be like so orderly that I'm anal about stuff. I just want to be able to have my space and not live in a life of chaos. She's worried about what her backyard looks like. Look at my look at my setup, man. Oh. That's life. That's life. I gotta take some time to clean this out too. Eight states in, still haven't done it. Because it happens. One thing adds up to another and another thing adds up to another and before too long it's it's crazy. So here's the thing with my wife and I. And I've talked about this in the past a little bit. When I go help these people, like I said, this is not unfamiliar territory to me. I've been there. I understand what it feels like. I know the hell that somebody is living through when things are overgrown. And life happens. That's what life looks like sometimes. It's what depression looks like. I've spoke about depression on here. And my whole life I've gone in and out of... I don't know if it's depression or uh, phases of growing or really what it is, but you know, when I hit a low, I hit a low. And I don't want to do anything. I just want to just want to sleep. And so here's what I've learned: that you go through phases of learning in life, right? You go through uh, kind of a, a consuming period where okay you realize something's going on in your life you want to change it you start consuming information or consuming um, stuff to change it then you have your time period where you're absorbing it and reflecting that's you stop consuming you're absorbing or reflecting then you may go through an identity change where you're not changing your yourself but it hurts to let go of a piece of who you were or what was going on in your life and the adjustment itself is very difficult so that might mean if your house is chaos and you have uh, disorder and you know maybe stuff like we had around I'm not gonna say it's depressing to throw stuff away but it's it's cumbersome it's like this huge task but once you get it completed or even get a little bit completed you can breathe again and you're like wow I've already come so far and I feel good about this when it's complete, you feel great. But of course, our life is never complete, and that's the task of life, and that is that is the point of life. We continue going day by day, living day by day, learning, helping others. And one of the things that I've always enjoyed is when you get to a certain point in your life, you can go, okay, I made it here. Let's look down at that person down there. Let's give them a hand and pull them up too. You know what's gonna happen? Somebody above you is gonna grab your hand and pull you up to the next level. So it's like, you get one, you help one. You know what I mean? But what I wanted to say is that at one point in time, my house with my wife and I looked like a order's house. And my grass was six foot high. And I know what it's like to live through that. And I know what it's like to be there. And our circumstances came down to a change in location for my wife, heavy depression for my wife after, she, after her father passed away, Heavy depression after leaving her career. Um, medications that were put onto her because of her um, illness that she was born with. It's a genetic illness. Um, and then I was young, so I enabled some of that stuff, not even realizing that's what I was doing. Like, my wife was taking a medication and. Um, I was like, hey, I qualify for that medication. You know what I'll do? I'll go get a prescription for it too. Keep in mind that both my wife and I had never been um, addicted to anything. And before her surgery, she didn't even like taking ibuprofen. Neither did I. But, you know, seeing my wife in her situation, how, how far it had come, I was like, you know what I could do? Is I could get that same prescription and then I'll have a stockpile of it. And when she's doing good, I can stock it up and if she has a day when she runs out then I'll have one there for her. Boy did that backfire you idiot. Now before too long she's taken that and mine. Now my wife's been clean off any medications for about seven years now which is just amazing. It's truly amazing. But 
while that was going on, I got hooked on to uh, Adderall as well. And it was a hard time in our life. And like I said, everything just fell apart. The thing is, people take Adderall and they're like, it makes my life great. It's, it's amazing. I get all this stuff done. You think you're getting stuff done. You don't get anything done. You're just spinning your wheels. I'm not saying it's that way for everybody. That was my personal experience. And our life fell into chaos. Just absolute chaos. And it's been a slow grind to get out of it. And now that I'm out of it and I'm out of the hell, I want to share what I know how to do to help other people. And my career's turned into that. It's really beautiful and I love it. Just saying it, if... If someone comes to help you, be open to it. And I have to accept that too. You know, sometimes people want to give me a gift. Now she wanted to give me money. And she's trying to reciprocate value. Can I give you money for doing X on the property? It would make me feel better. I don't want her to give me anything. I'm being very well taken care of. The Lord's got me. And when the time's ready, the Lord will give me the sign that I need that I should start taking some kind of donation. But if I'm here, I'm not taking a donation from the person I'm helping. I'm taking a donation from you guys as a whole out there that are willing to, to help out or whatever. But that isn't, now isn't the time. I'm not doing that. Keep it pure. That's some rambling. I gotta get this job done. It's like, pff, haven't even started. good about that now we can get on to the fun stuff <laughs> I'm taking a little break right before I um, do the edging I gotta say my wife packed me some lunch today she makes one hell of a sandwich she even seasoned it some pepper I think it's fresh ground pepper dude my point is it's good Find you a woman that knows how to make good sandwiches. <laughs> More than now, everything, buddy thinks I'm sexist. He might be right. Kidding, I'm not.
Right about now in the comments, somebody's saying, Why don't you use a shovel? It would be easier if you use a shovel. I just want you to know, first of all, shut mm -hmm. up. Second of all, no. Uh, and then there's somebody else that's like, You should use electric. That gas blower is horrible for the environment. All right, I got what you're saying. Why don't you ride a horse to work? Hey, when you can get an electric blower, they can do what I just did, sun up to sun down, because I could do that if I wanted to, with this blower, sun up to sun down. It'll do it. Oh, but you gotta give it gas. Yeah. I gotta do the same thing with electric blower, only every 10, 15 minutes. And the thing is, it takes a long time to charge electric. You know what gas doesn't take? Any time. I just go to the gas station, fill it up, put some oil in it. It's ready to go. I run it in machines. They run flawlessly all day. I'm not on board with electric equipment. I haven't seen it in my industry. Be up to par and all those people in California that are in the industry, I feel sorry for you. Everybody else that says you should go electric, maybe for doing weekly lawn maintenance if you're a homeowner, but if you're a professional, I'm sorry, but the equipment is not up to par and I'll tell anybody in the industry that. I know there's some companies that want to convince you that electric's the way to go right now. It's the it's the, the hype thing, the, I don't know, the, the popular, the trending thing. But here's the thing, when you're trying to get work done, it's not the tool, okay? You wouldn't ask a semi, a semi driver to not pull his, his semi load with that semi and pull it with an S10 truck. It just wouldn't work. Ford Ranger, I ain't no this truck. I ain't no stranger. I know that truck. That's a Ford Ranger. Can't do it. It's not gonna happen. That's my opinion on electric tools. I don't think that they're that, that good. If you're a homeowner and you have the time to let your batteries charge every 20 or 30 minutes, great. You keep on using that Ryobi. It's gonna do good for you. I'm done ranting, back to work. Uh, this is some back breaking stuff, by the way. Very, very thick sand. Uh, basically, I'm just getting it over there. I'm blasting it all around. Think of it like sand that people put on their lawn to level the lawn. It's not gonna hurt anything. I had somebody say, they said this after I was doing edging like this and it was dirt. Why do you blow the dirt back into the yard? Well, I wouldn't want to get the dirt mixed with the soil that's in the lawn. Woo! We might cause some issues there, man. I'm telling you what. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, and then once I blow that out, you're not even going to be able to tell that I did that. Then I'll just pick up the big grass clumps, shake them off, get all the dirt off of them, throw them in the yard, mow over them. Boom! No debris to haul away, no debris to trash up and throw in our landfills. Um, the other option would be to find a hole in the yard, take this soil, put it in that hole, and then get there, guess what? You filled in that hole with free soil. Everybody wants to talk about recycling. All, everybody that's on electric and this stuff, they want to talk about recycling. But when it comes to something like this, they view it as trash. Recycling, it's just dirt. Take that dirt and put it in a spot that you need it in your yard and blickety blam you're good to go all right back to back to work oops i even got something in the road in front of my truck don't worry nobody's gonna hit it i'm gonna blow that back into the turf when i'm done poor truck i don't care it's a work truck thing is not special to me it is a work truck i'm not worried about it it gets a scratch Oh well. I'm not going to let myself fall in love with something that's materialistic. Did I want a truck for a long time? Yeah. I think it was going to solve the problems in my life. I don't know why I did. I guess kind of. You're in business and I'm like, I'm so tired of breaking down every day. Now I don't have to break down, but I'm not going to fall in love with it. It's just a truck. It's just material. It's going to be gone before I know it. Now I'll get another one. It's the way of business.
This next section is full sun. So I picked up one of these hats the other day. I used to use these all the time in the lawn business. If you're a lawn care guy, you know a wide brim hat's really nice. These are cool. I like the ones that have the uh, neck flap. I couldn't find one of those down here. But this one's kind of got some material that you can get wet and uh, you know, keep you cool that way. You know, like those neck bands you get wet to put on your head. I'm just gonna get a wet. Or you can let it catch your sweat. It's up to you. I'm not that kind of guy. Uh, but the top's like breathable material and an athletic material and that'll just keep the sun off my my head and my neck that water will keep my head cool and uh the only downside of this is that there's so much sand and grit and everything from the way i have to clean this up that it just gets all over you and your neck and, and down your shirt and you just feel gross and it is what it is man But this was the easy part. This is the one in the shade. Over there, direct sunlight. I'll be over there for probably, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour. <laughs> they might look goofy, but I'm telling you, it's cool to look like a goofy guy to stay cool. Do what's good for the body, man. Who cares what other people think?
that's the neighbor's yard, but I might as well get that too, right?
Say whatever you want. I'm not done yet. I'm gonna power wash your porch and your brick walkway here. I gotta clean up the sidewalk still and weed eating stuff. But... Are right, you recording? Yeah, you good to do your thing. Hey, my name's Connor. I'm here in Mississippi. The lawn care juggernaut has done such a great job cleaning out my front yard, my backyard as well. Um, I lived here. I'm 19 years old. My grandma's house has been here since 1968, and I've never seen the yard real life in my you know my view in person or in a picture from back in the day ever looked this good I'm serious um, he does such a great job I thanked him so much for it and like I say I'm normally the one who's coming out here mowing the grass ever since I could ever learn how to start up a lawnmower for more than 10 years and I've never seen it look this good yeah man thank you guys for letting me work on the property all right, no problem at all. All right, that was really cool of Connor to come out. Uh, his mother's kind of camera shy, and I could tell she feels overwhelmed by the property and, and just uh, life in general. See, the thing is, you know, um, a lot of people would tell me, and I know I'll see it in the comments, by now somebody has commented already on this video, and they're like, oh, that big house, why would you help that person? And the reality is there's people that need help everywhere and what might look like a big house to you might be a prison to them the thing is you know she's taking care of her mom who has Alzheimer's and um, that's a hard thing and I can't I can't imagine I can't imagine that I, I saw it with my, my mother-in-law and, and her mom and um, I know how hard it is, but like I said, this might be a nice house to you and it might be a prison to her. She said she doesn't get out, out very much. And, um, you know, I know that's pretty rough. I work my ass off, but I am very, very lucky to have such a cool career and be able to go around and um, genuinely impact people's lives and help them out. And, in a cool way so yeah you know, I know for a lot of people it's it's a small thing and oh you're just helping them cut the yard once and I'll go right back to how it was next week I don't know man maybe it might just be the boost they need you know what I mean You only have to ask a stupid question once. You ask a stupid question, and if you're in a crowd and you ask a stupid question, 80% of the people in the crowd have the same question. They're just too cowardly to ask. But you ask and then someone actually tells you, you never have to ask that question again. You're no longer stupid. What stupid thing am I doing that I could quit doing? That I would quit doing? Because those aren't the same thing, right? Because you know there's stupid things that you're doing that you're just not gonna quit doing because you like them. But there might be something on the edge there where you could stop that. If you want to know something about yourself, sit on your bed one night and say to yourself, you got to mean this, like you got to be desperate. This is no game, this. My life is not everything I want it to be, and perhaps it's not everything that I need it to be. And by need, I mean my life is so unbearable that 
The suffering that's attendant upon that is make me nihilistic, cynical, bitter, resentful, driving the proclivity to see evil everywhere except within my own heart. Like, these are problems, man. And you ask yourself, you sit on the bed and say, okay, man, I'm ready to learn something. What's one thing I'm doing wrong that I know I'm doing wrong that I could fix that I would fix? It's like, you meditate on that, you'll get an answer. And it won't be one you want, but it'll be the necessary one. You know, and it, it's often something that will point you to small things. Like that works. You start making those micro improvements, like real micro improvements, real on the ground, actual micro improvements to things you know that are wrong, you'll improve unbelievably rapidly. The, the great people I know are brutally truthful to themselves and other people. And they have insanely adventurous lives. Get rid of everything you say that you only say to impress other people and just see if you can say what you believe to be true. That's an adventure. That's the thing about the truth, you know? Well, you gotta ask yourself, if you're not speaking the truth, who is it that's talking? If you're saying something that you do not believe to be true, it's not you talking. It's something else. It might be the part of you that wants to manipulate the other person into delivering what you think you want from them. Well, what is that spirit of manipulation that you've allowed to possess you? It's not you. Let's say you decide to live your whole life in that instrumental manner. You're gonna craft your words like the student who says, well, I'm gonna write what the professor wants to hear so I get the grade. It's like, well, you just turn yourself into that. Well, who is it that's doing that manipulating? It's not you, because those aren't your words. So even if you get the grade, it's not you that got the grade, it's the false you, it's the manipulative you. So you do that your whole life, you don't have your life. And then you think, well, God, that was a miserable life. I manipulated everybody, they were so damn stupid, they were sucked in by it, they're all contemptible. Everyone does it, you know, which they don't, by the way. And so that's a pathway to bitterness. Partly because if you're a manipulator and you use your language falsely, you don't live your own life. You live the life of whatever possesses you when you think it's you manipulating. And so you live the life of the spirit of manipulation. Oh, bro. You gotta take it. 
Nah, My mom told me you gotta take it for your gas money to get home. Nah, I can't take it, bro. You can't? I can't take it. I'm not supposed to. Yeah, but why are you supposed to? I'm not supposed to. They stop me from what I'm supposed to do. Will you take it? You want me to give it to you when you leave? Nah, I don't want you to give it to me at all. Put it in your pocket. You see something you need? I'm lunch. I'm somebody random, whatever. Um, do something with it, but uh, it's not for me, man. I'm already paid. All right. I'm already paid. I can pay. Uh, all right, man. All right. I appreciate it, though, bro. All uh, right. You have a. Thanks for doing this, though. Yeah, seriously. Just uh. Yeah, find somebody random. Buy him lunch, or I will do that. I mean, something else that's really fun to do. Go to uh, go to fast food, order you a uh, lunch or something, and uh, just tip them a hundred bucks, bro. Watch okay. what happens. They'll light up. It'll make their day, man. All right, man. Well, Thank you. Mind, I'm, like I say, I got you. <laughs> Put this I appreciate it, man. All right. I got just. A, I'm not gonna take money from the project. I got a small problem. Uh, my surface cleaner isn't working. I put pressure to it, so now it's under pressure. And uh, yeah, it's time for a new surface cleaner. That's what it is. It happens. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, knock off the ball valve. But keep in mind, it's got pressure on. Oh. It wasn't that bad. Sometimes it'll. <laughs> Fly off, man. All right. I think the valve on, valve on this, on the trigger, is just uh, corroded shut. So I'll just work on that later. But I toss it to the side for now. I'll get to work. At least I can get this section of the sidewalk and maybe the apron down on the street though. It's not completed, but. It's a lot further than it would have been. Uh, would have been. Would have been. That's what I'm trying to say. self-help doctor that's that if you don't organize yourself properly you'll pay for it and in a big way and so will the people around you and I would say start where you can start you know if, if something announces itself to you as in need of repair that you could repair then hey fix it you fix a hundred things like that your life will be a lot different now, I often tell people too, fix the things you repeat every day, because people tend to think of those as trivial. You get up, you brush your teeth, you, you have your breakfast, you know, you, you have your routines that you go through every day. Well, th those probably constitute 50% of your life. And people think, well, they're mundane, I don't need to pay attention to them. It's like, no, no, that's exactly wrong. The things you do every day, those are the most important things you do, hands down. Well, there isn't anything better to have than a problem that's worth solving, like that's really worth solving, right? And so the more of that you take on, the more you have a reason to get out of bed in the morning, no matter what. Like I'm getting up, I'm trudging forward. It doesn't matter what I'm suffering from. I've got things that need to be done. They're necessary. And that gives you that sense of purpose that is the antidote to bitterness. So, yeah, there's lots of reasons to, you know, because I've thought for a long time, imagine that, imagine you have a choice in front of you, because you do. So here's the choice. Your life, life is either meaningful or meaningless. Okay, so let's go through the meaningless part first. Because you think, well, of course I don't want it to be meaningless. It's like, yeah, just hold on a second. Nothing you do matters. And so, impulsive pleasure is the order of the day. No responsibility. 
That's you can do whatever you want. It's like Pleasure Island in Pinocchio, right? Or it's, the, it's like Neverland in, in 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 Peter Pan. You're still a kid. You can play all the time. Yeah. Impulsive pleasure, and and no responsibility. That's the reward for meaninglessness. Well, but then the, the other side is okay. Well, let's say you want your life to be meaningful. It's like okay, then what you do matters. It actually matters, right? Make a mistake, hurts you, hurts your family, hurts the world in a deeper way than you think, and you have to be awake to that, and then you have to take it on yourself. So, so you're at a particular stage right now, and that stage would involve a particular worldview and the behaviors that go along with that. So the perceptions and behaviors. But it's not enough because you haven't mastered the whole world and you're making mistakes all the time. And then there's other neurological mechanisms that, so maybe that's a more left hemisphere phenomenon, the instantiation of that identity. Um, then there's right hemisphere mechanisms that are tracking your errors and sort of and keeping track of them. And the errors are an indication that your theory is incomplete. So it, the errors accumulate and the information around the errors accumulate and another identity starts to become formulated and it, it solves all the problems your previous identity did, but also some additional ones. When you have an aha moment like that, it's the manifestation of that next identity that's, that's making itself known. It's, it's mm. you know, because it's being built from the bottom up. It isn't explicit yet. Then you'll encounter an explicit statement. You, you, you mentioned a couple there, and they map onto that. And that's the aha. It's like, oh, yes, oh, yes. That's what ties together these things that I've been wrestling with in the back of my mind, right? Someone made it explicit. And that's mm -hmm. what, well, that's one of the great things about language. That can also help fill in the gaps, too, because you yeah. then, you know, you, you can start to make arguments based on that observation that I have. That's, that's, that, that's the manifestation. I'm 
right here where the truck was and I'll weed it there and then I'll blow all that stuff up get it cleaned up and I'll show you the after shots but you know I wasn't able to get that is it gonna bother me yeah yeah it will um, but you know I came in and I got this looking as sharp as I possibly could so the whole front side up to here looks great the cool thing about the concrete down here is that even when it's dirty, it really doesn't look too dirty. I mean, it does since it's wet, but you can see just past there. You know, it's dry, it's got sand on it. It doesn't look too dirty. So I think it'll blend all right, except for when it's wet. You know, when it rains, it'll stick out like a sore thumb. But uh, when it's dry, it'll blend in all right. And all in all, I think this was a really good project. But um, yeah, I mean, it's just a, it's just a blessing to be able to do this stuff. So I wish I could do more. There's only so much time in the day. Um, I got as much as I could. I'm gonna skip on to the next project tomorrow because I'm only here in Mississippi. I'll be here four days total. So we basically, the way it works is we got a day where we drive in. Uh, so that counts as a day. So this is day two. Day three, I'm gonna spend at uh, a 85 year old woman's house. We're gonna be trimming some bushes cutting her grass her grass is pretty high i think it's going to be a sun up to sundown job and it might be a two-day event oh cool all right how long you lived over in this area i've lived in this neighborhood since 1998 oh, yeah. actually 1997 and this is the cleanest this yard has looked since i've lived here that's a statement to these guys here with the pink lawnmower thing. Man, Nobody else has got a pink lawnmower, but they got one. So why'd you paint it pink? Is it Pepto-Bismol for any particular reason? It sticks out like crazy. Yes, it does. That's it used audience. to be yellow, I see. Yeah. <laughs> that's I asked cool. my audience what color they wanted me to uh, wanted me to paint it. I said pink, black, or silver, and they said pink. I think they yeah. thought I was joking. But... No, Pepto-Bismol is the only way to go. Yeah. No, but seriously, you did a great job. This is unbelievable. I mean, the sidewalk and everything. I mean, these folks, uh, you know, they have an elderly lady and they've been, had a lot of uh, problems, and not problems, but you know, issues to deal with over the last few years. So it's nice of you to come over and take care of them. Yeah, man. I appreciate Thank it. You're right. All right, man, good job. Thank you. All right, man. It's wonderful to meet you, Mike. Nice meeting you too, sir. All right.
Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, man. You have a good night. Good job, though. It looks good. Thank you. Dude, that's what's up. I've had so many people stop on this one. You know, uh, when they're walking by, a couple people drive by. They all say it'll look good. <laughs> it's always good to get a compliment on your work. It feels great, you know what I mean? That's two in a row, back to back. Boom, boom. Woman walked by, she was walking her dog. She said, man, that looks so good. I almost slipped on some acorns over there earlier today. All right. Done. Looks a lot better. You know that sand's been there since Hurricane Katrina too. Oh yeah. They, the, the sand washed up from the beach to here. I don't doubt it, man. Yep. That's crazy. Yep. There's times where like I try to get. I mean, you might have seen where like some people, you know, we try to get out. Dude, like, that's a lot of work. We couldn't do it. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's a like, lot of work. I, I could, you know, like I'm, I'm made for this. Like I'm used to it and been doing. Like I'm trying time. to get it up by like digging it. You know what I mean? Like I can get like a block or two with we'll most of it, you know, but you really got a power wash to get like all. Back for day number two. It's going to be a pretty easy day. I just got to clean up this section. This is where my ramp came down onto the lawn. This is why uh, the side ramp sucks. It's great for me for what I'm doing, but for the average lawn care guy, it makes absolutely no sense. But for me, I'm traveling around. I actually have a 30 foot camper that we're pulling behind our truck. And if I see something on the side of the road and I want to go cut it, well, I can just drop my gate. And, uh, but while the gate's down, you obviously can't mow underneath it. You can't take care of the stuff that's there. Uh, so I've got to get this cleaned up. I would have done that last night, but I got caught up in conversation with the homeowner. It won't take but a minute. I'm going to get this. Uh, we're just got to edge it up. And then I'll bring out the weed eater, clean up this crack, and then I'll mow this section along with the uh, weed eater. So not too difficult. Let's get it up. <laughs> Basically, what I'll do is, if you don't take it, um, this money's not meant for me. 
So I'll um, buy five homeless people and I will buy them lunch and put this in the bag. Awesome. Or I will um, give this to five people that work in fast food as a random kid. Or whatever. That would be way you so do. amazing if you did the fast food thing because I love the fast food people. <laughs> yeah. I tipped them. I, well, when they were able to take it, I did back in the day when I worked as a, as a cocktail waitress 25 years ago. I would tip my Taco Bell girl. Yeah. That would be great. All right. Well, I'll do that. You. Hey, but I do want to thank you. <laughs> you give me a. I'm, Oh, did you hug him and kiss him? I appreciate the, you know, the offer. The, the offer for uh, hugging and kissing? No, I meant the money. You know, that's a good thing. Yeah, man. A lot of people wouldn't do that. He hasn't had anything to eat. Hey, you guys have a wonderful day. We're going to stay in touch. Don't worry. Have a good one. We'll stay in touch forever. <laughs> All right. So, here's what happened. Um, I've been... Um, while I'm on tour, I've been giving people money. So I'm cleaning up the yard, and I'm giving some money. So I got $500 here. And she would not accept this. And the thing is, this is not my money. I mean, it's my money. Uh, because it's currently in my hands, but this isn't meant for me. This is, um... I, I pulled a certain amount out, knowing that I was going to be giving money away. Uh, I'm detached from it and um, well basically I, I do what the Lord tells me that's what I'm saying and this isn't mine so that's gonna be the next section of this video anyways having said all that this one's wrapped up I'm gonna show you the after shots and then let's get to give him some money away oh yeah so by the way uh, I talked to the homeowner I was wondering what this pole was um, it used to be the street sign so it would have the name one way and then the name the other painted on it. I thought that was pretty cool. I knew it had to be some kind of marker. Got you number lonely October 33 I wear it on my soul's back Like fair, fair, fair And I can hear the brass ring I keep it in the nosebleeds Where you once felt a cold breeze Think it was Halloween I got you number lonely October 33 It's a cold fact Fair, fair, fair So hold me down Like you know how darling Hold me now Like you feel my plight I've got your number And I've landed this morning. I started in Tampa and now I'm here in beautiful Biloxi. As you can see, there right there is the famous Biloxi lighthouse. And on the other side of me is the ocean. This is where I'm sleeping tonight. Am I allowed to? I have no idea. I live a life doing what I want, how I want, wherever. Worst case scenario, somebody knocks on the door, <laughs> tells me to leave, or I get a ticket. So I landed and slept in Biloxi last night. 
morning. I've been here for a while. I stay on the streets. Really? Yeah, I live on the streets. Yeah. Well, Where are you from? Oklahoma. Oklahoma? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful here. Yeah, it is. It's a whole lot better. For real. At least it ain't cold. How long you been on the streets? About six months. I lost my job. I lost, lost everything I had. But I'm just not getting my ideas stuff back, so hopefully I can go back to work. Yeah. Kind of in a rough patch, huh? Yeah, for real. What kind of line of work were you in? I was a, I'm a cook. Oh, really? Yeah. Were you working at one of the casinos or something? Yeah. I used to work at uh, Allen Group in Gulfport. Yeah? Yeah, I worked there. Hell you get on these streets, man. Say what? It's hell out here sometimes. Yeah. You lived here your whole life? I originally from Laurel, Mississippi. You ever heard of that? You said Laurel? Laurel. That's up by Hattiesburg. If my uncle lived in uh, Holly Springs. I know, Holly Springs? Yeah. Would you down here on business or something? Or what? Uh, I travel around and I, I cut lawns for people for free. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. And, um, Turn into a career doing it. It's kind of cool. Oh yeah. Now, let's go wherever the Lord leads me. Man, that's what's up. Are you a believer yourself? Oh my God. Without Him, I wouldn't be here right now. Yeah. <laughs> Regardless, how rough it gets. I saw you out this morning, and I was gravitated towards you. And I hit the ATM last night, and I got some money. I was gonna give you some, man. Appreciate it, man. So. This is this is five hundred, man. Oh man, yeah. God, that's a blessing. Man. Absolutely, man. man. Put it towards what you need. And yeah, you definitely, definitely in need. So. Yeah, I drink or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I don't do drugs. I anymore. don't. I don't care, man. It's not my money. It's yours. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't care where you use it. I know. I know what it's like being a smoker, and you know. Feeling uh, the dignity of walking up and being up by your own damn cigarettes because you can afford it. Yeah, man. Those BLKs? Yeah. I used to smoke those too. Oh, you did? But I smoked uh, Blackstone Cherry. <whistles> Doofy, come. What's his name? Doofy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I smoked Blackstone Cherries, but when I was um, when I was broke, I was smoked the BLKs, man. Yeah, that's I what I did. I scrounged up some change. That's what I did. That's what I just did this morning. God <laughs> What's your name, man? I'm David, man. David, it's very wonderful to meet you. You too, man. Kevin Hanson. Nice to meet you, man. Very wonderful Real. to meet you. I walk around and they say, you always smile all the time. I say, I'm not. I'm going to do that anyway, you know what I mean? Yeah. Regardless of what. <laughs> Let me well, David, I got to hit the road. For Thank man. you, it's man. It's so wonderful to meet you. You too, man. Uh, you have a great day. All right, Stay man. safe. Yeah. And, you know, whatever's got you down, whatever's messing with you, it's going to pass soon. All right. You know? I believe that, too, man. I believe that, man. You want to pray, man? Yeah. It's time. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, I ask you to just look out for David and uh, watch over him as he's going through these times of hardship and struggle. Be with him in need. Keep him in good health. Keep him in good faith. Keep his heart strong. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank right, you for coming, man. Man. Yeah, right, man. All right, man. You have a good you, one, man. brother. All right, thank you. <laughs> Come on, dude. We gotta hit the road. It was very Sorry, wonderful man. to meet you, David. I wasn't supposed to stay here last night. I was supposed to get to Baton Rouge, but I ended up here for a reason. There's a reason for everything that happens to us. 
anyways, if we're open to it and we can listen to the Spirit, blessings come into our lives. Like this guy. I didn't want another dog. I love him. But you know what? While I'm out here on the road, he makes it a lot easier. And I can see why people have service dogs and stuff. So, you know, he was another situation where I was called to take action. The Lord will always send us signs on what we should be doing and where we should be going. So today I want to encourage you to be patient, be kind, be loving, help others in whatever way that you feel called. If you don't have financial backings, it might just be a smile, a handshake, a prayer, a hug, some kind of kind gesture like that. It doesn't have to be money. The Lord will tell you what's right. Anyways, this has been my stay in beautiful Biloxi. Unfortunately, I got to bounce in and bounce out. We're going to the next place. And uh, so it's on to, I believe, we're going to go just north of New Orleans. And then we're going to go to Baton Rouge. From Baton Rouge, we're going to shoot over to Texas, over to Santa Fe, Texas. Uh, so, yeah, let's see where the spirit leads us and the adventure takes us. We're going to enjoy it as we go. I'm sending love with you. Yes, I do. Share. Let me. Oh uh -huh.